My body's nobody's body but mine You run your own body, let me run mine My lungs were made to hold air when I breathe I am in charge of just how much I need Isn't it good to be alive on a day like today? Good one, isn't it? Hey, yeah. yeah. Have a seat there. Just breathe that air, you feel it all over your skin. It's good, isn't it? Sort of feeling you want to give somebody a big hug like that or one of those little pats makes you feel good. And it's that sort of touching I want to talk about today because it helps you to understand the sort of touching that doesn't make you feel too good. Um, can I ask you something? Natasha, who owns your body? It's my body. Absolutely. But sometimes people do things to one another which don't make them feel good. Now you know, you know the sort of touch that makes you feel good. Say, say you had your baby brother and you're carrying him and he's sitting on your hip and you've got your arm supporting him like that and he's got hold of your neck and he's hanging on tight and he's, perhaps he's tucked his head in there and it feels, you want it to go on for a long time. It feels good, that it's a yes feeling, it feels really good. And other touches give you a no feeling. It's like, no, I don't know why I don't like that, but I'm not too sure about that at all. I don't want that to keep going, I want that to stop. That's a no feeling. Sometimes a person can give you the no feeling without ever touching you at all. I'll show you what I mean. Let's play a pretend game. Sophie, pretend that it's your birthday and you've taken all your birthday money and you've gone down to the corner shop to buy a present that you've wanted for a long time. And when you get there, you find you haven't quite got enough money so you can't buy it. Now, let's pretend a man comes up and offers to give you the rest of the money if you will let him take you home, what would you do? Well, he is being very nice to give me the money, so maybe I would say yes. I don't want to be rude to him or hurt his feelings. What do you think, Nick? I don't think you should do that. You shouldn't take money from a stranger anyway, even if you really want the camera. You can say thank you very much, but no. I'd rather go by myself. My mummy's waiting for me. That's good. Tell him thank you very much, but no. Okay, how would you feel if he insisted on walking with you? Is that what you mean by a no feeling? Well, if this man's a stranger, then you shouldn't go off with him. And if he gives you the no feeling, then go to someone who can help you. Right. Well, who could help you? Well. If there's a policeman there, he can help. Or I could go into the shop and ask the shopkeeper to call my mummy to come and get me. And if the man keeps bothering me, I can tell him to go away. That's right. And you don't have to worry about hurting his feelings, even if he is being kind. Because you don't even know the man. Alright? Just because he's a grown-up does not mean that you have to do what he says. You could say, go away please. Say it. Try saying go away very firmly. Go away! That's good. Now, see if you can get everybody up and down the street to turn around and see what's going on. Make it that loud. Go away! No, make people right up there hear it. Okay? Go away! You remember I just talked about a no feeling. Well, I wanted to find out what makes yes feelings and no feelings when you're touching or being touched. So we went to a school and asked some of the kids, let's start off with the yes feelings. Well, I like it when my mum comes home from work and she's happy and then it, she grabs hold of me and cuddles me and puts me on the settee. Yeah. And um, well, when um, my brother does it, it isn't really a tickle, it kind of hurts. 
But when my dad does it, he flings me on the floor and tickles me around the ribs and it feels, it feels all, you know, shivery. Do you enjoy that feeling? Is that a yes feeling? Yeah. I like it when I'm sitting on my granddad's lap and he's um, picking me up and down and like a horsey and wow. it's quite sweet. And, and uh, when I sit on my mum's lap, it, it sort of tickles me and uh, feels nice and warm as well. I like it when my mum cuddles me at night and tucks me into bed and uh, my dad comes up sometimes and I pretend to be asleep. Well, sometimes I go under the covers and go the wrong way round so he thinks that I'm asleep. I like it when they say to me, that's good, you've done well at school and they tap you in the head like that. But uh, we, we hold hands really tight. First because we're lonely, we haven't got anyone else to play with, just us two. So we, um, go, we hold hands and go around and around until we get dizzy. And when the dizzy stops, we do it again. That reminds me of so many yes feelings that I'd forgotten all about. You all understand what I mean, don't you? It, touching can be one of the nicest feelings in the whole world. It's like picking up your baby sister when she's crying. It does a lot more to stop her crying than just talking to her. A yes feeling, it's, it's that feeling that makes you feel safe and loved. But the touches that still give me a no feeling are when people, for example, put their fingers through my hair and ruffle like that, so my hair goes up. I hate that. Or if somebody grabs my beard and pulls it and as a joke, it's not a joke to me. I don't like it. When I was a little kid, I know one of my uncles used to give me a squeeze and then he wouldn't let me go and he'd rub his face up and down my face and all the bristles on his chin when he hadn't shaved were like sandpaper. He thought it was funny. I hated it. Can you think of some feelings, some touches that give you a no feeling? Uh, yeah, when, we're in, when my mum gives me a good night cuddle, she squeezes me far too hard. <laughs> and that makes you feel uncomfortable? No, well, yeah, well, all around the back she goes... <laughs> I like being tickled when I'm bored. But when I'm doing something and then my aunt comes in, so she picks me up, she throws me on my bed, she starts tickling me everywhere, I don't like that. Somebody comes out and pinches me like that. I don't like it when people tickle me under the arms. Why? Well, I don't know. It's my granddad always tickles me when I go in to see him. Do you like that? No. <laughs> Does he know you don't like that? Yeah, but he thinks I'm only playing. But you're not? No. I'm sure we have lots more no feelings. But it is possible to learn to say no to people who are making you feel that way. You know, some people, especially grown-ups, they just don't listen. They don't pay any attention to you, they don't take any notice unless you actually come out and say, no, please stop. And, you know, sometimes you're not quite sure whether something is giving you a no feeling or not, but it's all right to ask people to stop anyway. Remember our song, my body's nobody's body but mine. You run your own body. Let me run mine. Say no. You've got to learn to trust your own feelings. Right, enough of the no feelings. Who can give me another yes feeling? I sit down and I cuddle my little kid and he cuddles me back. Well, let's try and practice what we've learned about yes and no feelings. As I tell you this next story, if something starts to give you a no feeling, tell me that's giving me a no feeling because I want you to learn to trust your feelings and also tell me if it's giving you a yes feeling. Okay, let's pretend that it's after school and you're playing and there's nothing much to do, it's a bit boring and suddenly these big boys come up and they invite just you four to join their special club and they say that they'll take you to their secret hideout. How does that sound? Like a yes feeling, because they didn't invite anyone else and we could find a new place to play. Okay, so far so good. Now, suppose 
They say that if you want to join this big boys club, you have to promise not to tell anyone else about it. Because if you do tell, the club's going to lose its hideout. Now, Sophie, how do you think you're going to get to that hideout and still keep it a secret? I can promise not to tell. Yeah, but what if they didn't want you to know either? They can blindfold us just like blind man's buff. Then we won't be able to tell anyone, even if they ask. I don't want to be blindfolded. If you've got a no feeling, Sophie, don't go any further. Me too. It feels creepy. I'm not going. I'm stronger than you are. I'm not feeling anything. Mickey, I don't think you should go. I don't care. I'm going to keep going. Well, Nicky, let's see what happens. Now, they lead you to a hut in the woods and they take off the blindfold and they say that if you want to stay in their club, you've got to take off your clothes and play a game. No, that's not right. I don't like that. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. First of all, tell them to stop talking like that. But if they go ahead and make you do it anyway, what can you do? Love with the man that shot, tell him to go away. It's your body. And shout very loud. Right. Whatever you do, don't try to fight with them if they're bigger than you. Just keep talking. Keep talking. Tell them to stop what they're doing. Tell them you don't like what they're doing. Tell them you want to go home. So suppose they agree to stop playing those private games. So long as we keep the secret and don't tell anyone, otherwise they'll beat us up. And then what do we do? Look, there are good secrets like, like keeping a surprise for a birthday party. But there are bad secrets and they want you to keep a bad secret. So if you're really scared that they're going to hurt you, Tell them anything just to get yourself away safely. Tell them that you can't play now, that you've got to go home, but tell them that you'll be back later. Tell them anything. But afterwards, remember that they want you to keep a bad secret. It's a secret that could hurt other children because they might play those same games with those other children. So you should tell your parents or tell, tell an adult that you trust, like your teacher or the school nurse. But I think they really will beat him up. The best way to be safe is to tell enough other people. You want to blow a whistle that everyone can hear. Yeah, like when they set up a fire alarm. It's just like a fire, isn't it? Right, you sound that fire alarm because you have a right to feel safe. Of course, the best way to be safe is not to go with them in the first place. Now, what we've been pretending so far is about people that we don't know. But you can also get a no feeling from people that you already do know. And it's, it's quite hard to say no to these people because you feel that you're always supposed to be nice to them. Or at least you feel that you should do what they ask you to do. Now, Let's pretend, Natasha, that you've gone to visit your friend Jean, and when you get there, she's just gone out shopping, but her dad invites you in to wait for Jean to come back. Okay, there you go. Right, there you are. Like that. He did that on purpose. Really clumsy of me, let me... We'll just, we'll just take this off. I hope no one oh, ever tries that with me. Right, but he is doing it, so she has to do something. First of all, she should look him straight in the eye and tell him to stop. Stop that! Yeah, tell him to go away. Just because you give me to that doesn't mean that you have to take my clothes off and I'll take it home to my mummy to wash. So you're out of the house. What do you do now? You have to tell your mummy and daddy. Sure, but how do I tell them? I've never had it happen before, so I don't know how to tell. You could say, Mummy, when I went to Jean's house, her dad spilled a drink on me and tried to take my shirt off, and it gave me a no feeling. Right. If it's hard to explain, you could always take your dolly and you could use that to point out to your mummy where you were actually touched, where you didn't want to be touched. Or you could... 
you could draw a picture and you could point out on the picture where you were touched. You mustn't be ashamed to tell people that you were touched where you didn't want to be touched. You know, sometimes you can get a no feeling even from somebody you live with in your own house. Like when I fight with my big brother, punches me in the tummy and it hurts me and even hurts my feelings. That's one kind of touch you don't like, isn't it? Yeah. Let me tell you about another possible problem. Well, that's really too bad that you can't go swimming today, Sophie. But don't worry, because I'll stay with you. It's just not fair. I'm not that sick. Maybe we could do something special, like a bubble bath and an ice cream. I don't want a bubble bath. I'm too old for you to do that now. Don't be silly. We'll have a little game that'll be our secret. Just you and me. If you want the ice cream. Well, all right then. make me touch you like that because we love each other it's our little secret but i don't like it it's not a good secret it's still our secret and i don't want you to tell mummy or anyone if you do i could go to prison and that would be all your fault did that give any of you a no feeling yes it did me too it gave me a no feeling a lot. Why, Nikki? I don't know. It just did. Just a feeling. I wouldn't have liked it to happen to me. That's right. You don't have to have all the reasons. It's enough to know that when anybody is giving you a no feeling, you tell them to stop. But maybe it's her father or uncle. It's family and you have to obey them. <sighs> Not if they're doing something that you know is wrong, or even if you're not sure that it's wrong. Everybody, that's kids and grown-ups, they have a right to their own body, don't they? What happens if you tell someone and he has to go to prison? Some people don't act right with kids and they need help. You can't protect them from trouble that they themselves have caused and it's better to say something so that you and the family can get the help you need. You know, nothing gets better by keeping quiet about it. I have a friend with a problem about touching, and he told the teacher, but suppose grown-ups don't believe kids. That's a really big problem because sometimes grown-ups just don't listen to kids, or they don't believe you. They say, rubbish! Or they say, how can you tell such lies, you wicked child? Or how dare you say something like that? You've just got to keep trying and keep trying until someone believes you. Just because it's hard, you mustn't give up. Keep trying, keep trying until just one person hears what you're saying and you feel safe again. And remember, just because the person who caused it gets into trouble, it doesn't mean that it's your fault. You are the one who felt hurt in the first place and you are the one who has a right to feel safe again. Okay? Right, we've been talking about a lot of very difficult no feelings. Let's talk about some yes feelings because there are a lot more of those. Who can give me another yes feeling? I get a yes feeling when I lie on the floor and my big sister Marie scratches my back. When I sit on my granny's lap and, and she reads me a story and she smells very nice. Let's sing that song again, and this time maybe it'll mean a bit more to you. And remember, most people want to help. So if you can remember all the things that give you that yes feeling, then it'll help you to be able to say no to those people who are really bothering you and giving you a no feeling. Tell them to go away, and we'll get all our friends around us, and we'll sing a song together. I want you to my body, my body, body, body.
body's body but mine. You run your own body, let me run mine. My body's nobody's body but mine.